problem is that fossil fuels appear to the consumer to be the cheapest energy. They're not really cheap because they don't include their full cost to society. They're partially subsidized, but mainly they don't include the effect of air pollution and water pollution on human health. If you're a child with asthma, you have to pay the bill for fossil fuel companies. And the climate effects, which are beginning to be significant and will be much larger in the future, are also not included in the uh, price of the fossil fuel. So the solution would be fairly straightforward. Let's add into the price of fossil fuels the, the, the total cost. But you can't do suddenly, but you can do it gradually over time so that you can keep it as uh, time to adjust. Can I hear the next question? So I argue that this should be done, it has to be across the board, across all fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas, at the source, the domestic mine, or the port of entry. And I also argue that that money should be given to the public, give an equal amount to all legal residents of the country. That way, the person who does better than average in limiting their carbon footprint will actually make money. And in fact, two thirds of the people uh, would come out ahead. And it would also address the growing income inequality in the world between normal health countries because low income people would tend to uh, have a lower carbon footprint. People who fly around the world and have big houses would pay more but they can afford to do that. So that's, that's a uh, transparent market based solution, a conservative solution which stimulates the economy. The economic studies in the United States uh, show that after 10 years, if you had a $10 a ton of CO2, carbon free, distributed the money to the public, after 10 years, they would reduce the emissions 30 percent, and after 20 years, more than 50 percent. Then it would spur the economy, creating more than 3 million new jobs. Uh, so, furthermore, this is the only viable international approach. You cannot ask each of 190 countries to individually limit their emissions. What we have to do is have the price of fossil fuel economy. That requires only a few of the major players to agree, let's have a rising uh, uh, common uh, carbon fee and those countries that don't want to have that fee will put a border duty on products from those countries. And furthermore, we will rebate to our manufacturers the carbon fee when they export a, a product to a non, uh, non-participating nation. So this economist agree is a fair way to do it, and it could rapidly move us off of fossil fuels. But what we are hearing is, um, although uh, Christiana Segarra says uh, many have said we need a carbon price, and the investment is so much easier than a carbon price, but life is much more complex than that. So, what we're talking about instead is the same old thing, the same old thing that was tried in Kyoto. Asking each country to promise, oh, I'll reduce my emissions, I will cap my emissions, I'll reduce them 20% or whatever they decide is that they can do. You know, in science, when you do a well controlled experiment and you get a well documented result, you expect that if you do the experiment again, you're going to get the same result. So, why are we talking about doing the same thing again? Uh, I, you know, I, I, I don't like to be use crude language, but I learned this from my mother, so I use it anyway. This, this, uh, this is half-assed and it's half-based. It's half-assed because there's no way to make it global. You have to beg each nation. So I, I went to Germany to, to speak with. Uh, 
hoping to speak to Merkel, but I got cut off at um, the Sigmar Gabriel minister. Uh, and, uh, you know, I said, well, he, he said, oh, we're going to do Captain Faith. Captain Faith is off step. And I said, this is a that will work inside that. Uh, and, and so I said, what's the cap on India? And, and he said, we'll tighten our carbon cap. Well, he said, said Germany is now 2% of the world we make them. So him tightening the German carbon cap is not going to solve the problem. You've got to have something that will work globally. And it's not safe because there's no, there's no enforcement mechanism. So, this is, um, we have to, what I, I think are, you know, what I hear is all the ministers are coming here or the heads of state and they're planning to clap each other on the back and say, oh, we're really doing great. We're, this is a very successful conference and we're going to address the climate problem. Well, I don't, what, if that's what happens, then we're screwing the next generation and the following one. Because we're being stupid and doing the same thing as we did. So, what's the effect? Uh, uh, you know, you try very hard to say, okay, we're going to reduce our nation's emissions. Well, or an individual reduces their emissions. The one effect of that is to reduce the demand for the product and keep the price low. As long as fossil fuels are dirt free, they will keep being used. It's like you bring coal, it's like burning dirt. You just take a bulldozer and you can build it out of the ground. It's very cheap. It does not include the cost to society. It's a very dirty fuel with some. Negative effects, which we now understand very well. We can't pretend that we don't know what's going to happen if we stay on this path. So, so this is the, the path we're on, you know. If we pretend that what we're doing is having any effect, well, it might slow down the rate uh, of growth, but that's not what's needed. Science tells us we have to actually reduce emissions rapidly. And furthermore, the economic studies show that if you put an honest price on, on carbon emissions, you would reduce the emissions rapidly. But if you don't have that price on there, you're not going to reduce the emissions. You will reduce the emissions someplace, but then it keeps the price low, so somebody else will burn it. And that, that economic study you're referring to also found that if you put $10 per ton in the future, and I was pretending to get it for years. What was the effect on jobs? Well, and in the case of the United States, it's probably that's where the study was done. There was 3 million new jobs in 20 years, and uh, a significant increase in GMP. So we need, we need energy. So people thinking, oh, we have to do less. Well, yeah, we should have energy efficiency, but that would be encouraged by a rising price. Uh, but we do need energy. We need energy to raise the poor people out of poverty. That's the best way to keep population in control. Those countries that have become wealthy now have fertility rates that are below the retirement level. So we need, and the reason they, these countries became wealthy is because they had energy, and that energy was fossil fuel. Unfortunately, we can't continue to use that as the mechanism to get out of the We need to have clean energy, and the way to make that happen is to have this root. I, you know, I've met with uh, captains of industry, I call them, leaders of not, not only utilities, but even uh, oil companies. These people have killed in the They would like to be part of the solution. If the government would give them the right incentive, by putting this across the board, rising carbon fee, they say they would change their investment and they could do it rapidly. So it's not that the problem can't be solved, but it's not being solved. And nothing that I've heard so far indicates that we're intending to, it's not to keep people It's the simplest approach you can have. It's not as honest, simple, rising carbon fee. 